on a 65 degree October Friday night in Fort Washington. It's the first taste of fall as the Upper Dublin High School Cardinals will play host to the Quaker Town Panthers. For SFBN, I'm Christopher Markowitz alongside Mike Mataraki. And Mike, we've got a suburban 1A American matchup tonight between two tough one-loss squads. No question about it, Chris. These two squads, tough, hard-hitting suburban one-league American teams. It's always a battle. Right now, like you said, two teams that are uh, had one loss. Both of their losses came on September 21st. Upper Dublin, in the words of their coach, Brett Stover, humbled at Interact Powerhouse Penn Charter. Quaker Town lost a tough three-point decision to Cheltenham. So both of these teams strong defensively last week to get back into the win column. And you mentioned that Cheltenham game. That is the one common opponent between these two squads, Mike. Absolutely. And last week, Upper Dublin got back into the win column with a 20-7 win over Cheltenham. And Brett Stover said that after being humbled by Penn Charter, they were going to need to rely on the defense, and that they did, limiting... Uh, Quakertown's star running back, Jameer Barnes, to 36 yards on the ground, 99 total yards for the game. Quakertown, meanwhile, went to Wissahickon, had two, large, uh, two uh, running backs combined for nearly 175 yards, and quarterback Brad Bryan completed 8 of 10 passes. Virtually every receiver he had was open. And you alluded a little bit to these two offenses, Mike. Both of them like to pound the ball on the ground. Can you highlight some players that we're going to see in the backfield for both of these squads? Absolutely. For Upper Dublin, it's a two-headed monster. It's Lucas Rosselli and Mason Novak. Lucas Rosselli so far on the season, 38 carries, 226 yards. It's a 5.9 per carry average, four touchdowns. Mason Novak, 60 carries, 282 yards. It's a 4.7 average. He's gotten in the end, into the end zone twice. For Quakertown, it's Christian Patrick. Christian Patrick, 49 carries, 269 yards, four touchdowns, and Michael Terra, the workhorse, 80 carries, 415 yards, a 5.2 average, and nine touchdowns. Terra, you mentioned nine touchdowns on the ground, four as a receiver. He has 13 of their 23 offensive scores, so Terra is the guy you have to shut down if you're Upper Dublin. We're going to take a quick break here, but when we come back, kickoff for tonight's game. Game. Hi, I'm Stephanie McDougal, physical therapist and clinical supervisor at the Physical Therapy and Wellness Institute, or PTW, in Satterton. I'm here to talk to you about rehabbing an ACL or other sports injuries after um, and using our Alter G equipment. So, over in Satterton, we have a special uh, piece of equipment called the Alter G and it's an anti-gravity treadmill, state-of-the-art, and it uses NASA technology. So the ACL is a ligament in the knee that connects the femur or the thigh bone to the tibia or the leg bone, and it helps to reduce shear forces when you're doing different weight-bearing activities. So sometimes this is commonly injured in sports like football, soccer, basketball, and downhill skiing. And it's usually injured during a deceleration activity, such as jumping, landing, pivoting, or twisting. Um, males are more, or females are at a higher risk of tearing their ACL. They're about four to six times more likely. And this is due to different female anatomy, pelvic angles and cue angles, and a weaker hamstring to quadriceps ratio, which predisposes them to a higher risk of an ACL tear. Um, usually about 150,000 to 200,000 ACL tears occur annually, um, and about 70% of them are the result of a non-contact injury, and about 30% of them are the result of a contact injury. So what can we do here at PTW that other therapy clinics can't do? Well, we have the Alter-G. The Alter-G allows us to uh, decrease the person's body weight for 1% body weight increments, anything from 20% to 100% of their body weight. So this allows us to get you back to different functional activities quicker and with less pain and more safely. It's also false proof. So if you start walking and you're still learning how to walk again after your surgery, you can't fall, the machine will help hold you up as well. 
So with the use of the Alter-G, we can help you to recover faster and stronger, build endurance, and not do this all sooner in the recovery process with minimizing the risk of further injury. So using the state-of-the-art Alter-G, along with our sports medicine expertise here at the Physical Therapy and Wellness Institute in Satterton, we can help you recover faster after your ACL repair. If you have any questions or you'd like to come in and check out the Alter-G, stop into our Satterton location. Welcome back to Cardinal Stadium in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania, alongside Mike Mataraki. I'm Christopher Markle. It's Upper Dublin, won the coin toss, but chose to defer. So, Mike, we're going to set it off and play defense to start here tonight. And as we talked about last week, that defense in that victory last week, 20 to 7, hard hitting, fast to the ball, aggressive. Didn't give up a lot of yardage at all, and they're going to put that defense right back on the field to start the game tonight. It's a defensive squad that gives up an average of just 15 points per game. They are led by Logan Hume. He is averaging just under six tackles a game for them this season. John Colbrenner, one of their leaders in sacks as well with three on the year. Now, meanwhile, Quakertown offensively is a squad that's averaging nearly 30 points, 29.6 points per game. Upper Dublin certainly no slouches themselves at 26.2 points per game. But I, I think it's interesting that Coach Stover wants to put that defense on the field first and really give this potent Quakertown offense a test right out of the gate. Certainly potent, averaging 190 yards per game on the ground. Like, it's not just the scoring, but it's the amount of yardage they're able to get with that ground attack. But Upper Dublin is no slouch as well, running the ball. Well, no, and, and obviously, Chris, like we talked about before the game, that when you can keep the ball on the ground and you grind up that kind of yardage, I mean, you're putting points on the board, you're running the clock, you're not giving your opponent a chance to get on the field and, you know, have it hit you with that counter punch, and eventually it winds up leading to big plays and large margins of victory. Michael Taylor back to receive for Quakertown, kicking off for Upper Dublin is number four, Matt Shields. Crowd getting excited here. And Shields sends it away. It's a short kick. Caught close to the sideline. Tackled is number 42. Trying to find him on a roster sheet here for Quakertown. But it was a good start here as they'll get the ball right around the 40-yard line. Leave it to us. First play right out of the gate. We don't have a 42 on our roster. <laughs> You know, in baseball, they say hit them where they ain't. It seems sometimes like that's that's the high school roster. Oh, in high school football, you kick it where they ain't. Well, it'll be a start at the 40-yard line for the Quakertown offense. Let's see what Brad Bryan comes out with here. Brad Bryan, the quarterback, hands it off to his left. Met immediately at the line of scrimmage is Michael Terra. No gain. He's met at the line of scrimmage by a flock of Cardinals. So good start to this game for the Cardinal defense. And for our viewers at home, you'll be able to easily identify Michael Terra by the locks coming out of the, the back of the helmet, if you will. Now in the backfield is number 24, Christian Patrick, part of that duo. He takes the hand off. Actually, it's a fake. And the quarterback, Brad Bryan, carries it forward for a gain of about two. Yeah, and he wasn't getting past Tyler. Uh, or excuse me, he wasn't getting past Matt Shields, or the uh, linebacker for Upper Dublin. Came up and made a huge hit. It's a big hit. It forces third down and long. We'll see if Quakertown steps back and passes here. Brian with time in the shotgun has his man open for a first down. That is number 88, Matt Pavone, the sophomore tight end. And he picks up a big first down there. They're still driving here in the first quarter. Excellent job of pass protection by the Quakertown offensive line. Brian in rhythm, quick three step drop, gets rid of the ball. Easy pitch and catch to Pavone for the first down. We need these teams, Mike, throw the ball a, a lot, but that is a big pickup for a Quakertown squad on a long-distance situation. Well, when they do, they do it effectively. Now a handoff here. Short gain. 
It was number 24, Christian Patrick, on the handoff. Got about three yards. And it's interesting that the Quaker Town offense, at least in terms of the run game, is testing the interior of that upper double defense rather than trying to spread them out a little bit and work to the outside. The, uh, look for some, uh, some quick outside runs with Christian Patrick coming up here. See if they can't spread the defense a little bit. Well, it's Patrick again in the backfield. He's taken the brunt of the carries early on. They send him in motion to the left. It's play action. Throw downfield is caught by number 21, Michael Terra. And that is going to be a first down. So a nice play action there by Brad Ryan. He found Terra wide open. And another first down for Quakertown. Yeah, they, they ran the, the motion to the other side, came out. Naked bootleg, Brian under control with a lot of time. Comes out, rolls out. Sees number 21, Tara, coming across the formation, wide open at the sticks, hits him in stride. Tara turns it up the field, first down, Quakertown. Now two back set for Quakertown. It's Tara and Patrick in the backfield. Handoff goes to Tara. He has some space and he gets a solid gain, about four or five yards on the first down handoff. Yeah, and Brady Balaka and Mason Novak were in there on the tackle and they weren't going to let it go any further than it did, but gained a five or six yards on first down, first time that the interior of that upper Dublin defense has been penetrated. It is, and that is the strength of this Quakertown squad. It, that's Terry. He's the fullback, he'll run it up the middle. Patrick's more of a stretch to the sidelines, as now it's Patrick in the backfield. In motion now, Ryan going to take it up the middle. Brad Ryan scampers forward, has a first down and more. Interesting at that time, they had Tara in the slot to the left. They brought Tyler, Tyler Merworth in motion, then faked the gift to Christian Patrick on a little RPO, and Brad Bryan took it right up the middle himself. Tyler Wilmoth is the lead receiver for this Quaker Town squad, has 15 receptions, and also can get it on those jet sweeps. So it'll be a two back set again for Quaker Town. Brian again going to take it up the middle. Big game there as he's brought down. Looks like he's just shy of the first down marker. Just outside the five yard line. And now they will move the chains and give him the first down. First down, first and goal, Quaker Town. So first and goal, Quaker Town, just outside the five yard line. The running game has looked solid early on. Brad Bryan with some quality looks up the middle. Two back set here. It's Patrick and Tara in the backfield. Hand off. Tara won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Good job there by the Upper Dublin defense. A great penetration in the backfield by the right side of that Upper Dublin defensive line. Tara tried to bounce it outside. It wasn't there. Tried to then bounce it back upfield. And as you said, just swarmed under. Nowhere to go for Terra on the play. This will bring up second down and goal from the six yard line. Now Terra, uh, he's a low too, a 5'10", 205 pound senior. He's not an easy man to tackle. He also plays the outside linebacker spot on defense now. Brian, Brian firing for the end zone, and that is through the hands of Terry who had him. But he can't hold on for a touchdown. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, he had his choice out there. He had Tara. He also had number 26, Nick Levinsky, out there, the tight end. Big six foot, 230 pound target. Kind of seemed like he had his choice of receivers out there and just unfortunately maybe picked the wrong one. So after the errant pass, it'll be third down and goal. Ryan looking, rolls out left, going to try to run for the goal line, and he is pushed out of bounds at the five-yard line. So Upper Dublin holds Quakertown out of the end zone for now. We'll see if they elect to go for it here. That'll bring up fourth and goal for the Panthers at the Upper Dublin five. It looked like there's a lot of pressure up the middle. By number 68, Brian Doe for Upper Dublin. And they're going to go for the field goal here now. 
We're spotting it at the 12. It'll be a 22-yard attempt. Gavin Corey set to take the kick. And it's good. It's through the uprights. So it'll be a 3-0 lead early on here at Cardinal Stadium for the visiting Quakertown squad. And Mike, what did you like from their offense on that drive? Good mix of run and pass right out of the gate. Um, most of the pass also done off of play action or run pass option. I thought other than the, the, the couple of shots into the middle of the upper double defense where there was just nothing there, great job of mixing it up with the play calls. Coach George Bannis' offensive coordinator, offensive staff, you know, sort of feeling out upper double very effectively on that first drive. And just a couple ticks over five minutes, they have three points on the board. Three points on the board, but Upper Dublin was able to hold them to three points. What did you like from their defensive stand there on the goal line? Ben, don't break. When you have a high-powered offense like Quakertown, and you can limit them to three-point drives instead of six- or seven-point drives, obviously your defense coming up very stout. So it'll be a 3 level lead for the Panthers, and now we'll get our first chance to see the Upper Dublin offense take the field. Back to receive for the Cardinals is number 25, Lucas Rosselli, one of the leading rushers for this Cardinals offense. And a dangerous return man as well. Sending away for the Panthers will be Gavin Crosset. Six minutes, 56 seconds to go in the quarter. Great kick. Roselli just going to let it roll. Touchback. Now, Crosset got all of that one. He hit that one to about the six-yard line on the fly and one hop into the end zone. Upper Dublin is going to start their own 20-yard line. So they'll have it on the 20. And leading this Upper Dublin offense will be the quarterback, number 17, Mike Slivka, in his junior year. A junior captain for this offense, and he's got Lucas Rosselli and Mason Novak to hand the ball off to. And Slifka on the season, a tick under 50% passing, but a quarterback rating of 92.3, so when he does complete him, he completes him for yardage and touchdowns. Nine touchdowns, just two interceptions for Slivka. We've got a flag on the field, and this is going to be a false start against Upper Dublin. Uh, and certainly not the, the start that Coach Stover and his offensive staff wanted. False start on their first offensive play. So moving backwards will be the Upper Dublin Cardinals. We'll see how that affects them. Do they want to hand it off now still with a first and long situation? Yeah, interesting, the, the sticks on the far side are showing second down, but as you said, it is a, a first and 15 as opposed to second down. Dylan Zlotnikov goes in motion. Now the pass out to the back. It's a good one. Rosselli up the sideline, makes a move back to the left, still on his feet, breaks that tackle. Rosselli now at the 30 and is finally stopped. But Lucas Rosselli takes a check down pass for a huge first down game. 55 yards on first and 15, you can't beat that. Very well designed, like you said, check down or a screen pass. I think that was the play all along. Slifka dropped back, just took one quick glance to the left to move the defense, dumped it off to the right. If you take a look at the replay here, Rosselli showing off all his moves on that one. Lots of moves by Rosselli. So that sets up Upper Dublin on Quakertown's 32-yard line. Slivica going to send a man in motion. Rolling out to his right. Fires. Picked off. Picked off by Quakertown. Tackle on the far sideline. And hard to tell who that was from our vantage point. May have been number 24, Christian Patrick. I'm not certain. Let's get another look at this. We'll see here on the replay. Here's Slifka rolling out to the right. And tip ball picked up. Is that number 20, Delbert Ross? Looks like to me it's number, it could be number 30. Pretty sure it's Delbert Ross, Delbert okay. quarterback, 5'11 senior. All right. So Slifka had a receiver in the area, but it would 
became a 50-50 ball and the interception. Tough break for Upper Dublin. And now Quaker Town with it on their own 45. First play is a handoff, gain of four. Looked like Melworth on the uh, end around there. Tyler Melworth went in motion there and picked up four yards. Excuse me, Melworth. I will get that right at some <laughs> point tonight. So Quakertown in business early on. They scored a field goal on their opening drive, and now an interception has them with the ball again here in the first quarter. 5.44 to go. This pass is out to Tara fighting forward, and he's going to pick up the first down. A great second effort there as he was stopped short, but he kept chugging. And as we saw on the first drive, Michael Terra being deployed all over the place. The backfield, the slot, that time out wide, took the, the bubble screen, got up the field, got the first down. Terra can do it all. He's the lead rusher, but he also leads the squad with four receiving touchdowns. So they utilize him all over the field. In the backfield is Christian Patrick. Two receivers to the right and left. Now Terra goes in motion. He's going to take the handoff. Terra... Still on his feet, breaks a tackle, and there he goes. Michael Terra up the left sideline, loses the football. Stripped away, and now it is recovered by Quakertown. Big game there for Terra, but it was nearly a disaster. And that was Dylan Zlotnikoff, who chased him down from behind after Terra broke multiple tackles. And here it is on the replay. Terra came from that slot position in motion, broke a bunch of tackles here. But the strip from behind came from number five, Dylan Zlotnikoff, as you mentioned. Quakertown able to recover, however. And they'll have it on the 20-yard line. Once again, in scoring range. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Hand off to Patrick, he goes up the middle, but not much room to run. Stop for a short game, maybe got two there. Look like number six, Jacob Rossman for two on the play. Upper Dublin. Second and eight. Upper Dublin. Soft, sophomore linebacker got in the play there. And the interior defense on against this Quaker Town run game has looked good thus far for the Cardinals. Yeah, all of Upper Dublin's success has been either to the outside or on cutbacks. Anything going strong up the middle, Upper Dublin's been stout. Patrick in the backfield, in motion now. Patrick going to get the handoff, and he scampers forward just shy of the first down marker. This will set up a third down and two. They sent Ross in motion from the slot position on the fake handoff and then gave it to the back. Third and two, Quaker Town. So it'll be a third down and two here. Yeah, Nifty with a misdirection play there by Quakertown. Terra out in the slot to the left of Brad Bryan. Patrick in the backfield. Fake handoff. Fired towards the end zone. Bryan's pass. Pass was intended for Terra, but it was too high. And that will bring up fourth down. Brian McGarry, the junior defensive back back there for Upper Dublin. Good positioning there on Terra. Both players every right to the football. There was a collision, but it certainly wasn't pass interference on either side. No, Terra just ran into him trying to make a play on the ball. I, I think it's a good no call there. But it looks like Quakertown will go for it. Third down and two on the 12. Terra and Patrick in the backfield. Hand off left, it's to Patrick. He falls forward, does he have enough? It's gonna be close. They might have to bring the chains out here. Quakertown aggressive early on, going for it on fourth and two. And they'll elect to bring the chains out. And you know in a high school game when they bring the chains out, it's real close. Had to get it to the 10. The spot's just around there. If they have it or don't have it, it's going to be by a couple links of the chain. And it is short by an inch. Upper Dublin stands up Quakertown. And that is a big stop here in the first quarter. 
Uh, certainly after the, the unfortunate upper double and turnover in Quakertown territory, Quakertown matriculated their way back down the field. Upper Dublin gets the stop. They take over again inside of their own 15-yard line, but again, points off of the scoreboard. With 3.23 to go in the first quarter, it's a 3 nothing lead for Quakertown, who's run a lot of plays. Upper Dublin has run just two plays because the 55-yard gain and immediately after that, the interception. So for your defense of your Upper Dublin, you got to stay on the field here for a little bit. Yeah, and after the interception on Slifka's last throw, it'll be interesting to see whether Upper Dublin decides to come out and go to the ground game or if they're going to put Slifka right back on the horse and take a shot down the field. In the backfield, they have Rosselli. We'll see what they do here. Likely going to go to the ground. Now, Rosselli in pistol with Mason Novak offset to the left. Interesting formation here. Now, man in motion in the backfield. It's going to be a handoff to Rosselli. And he fights forward for a gain of a couple yards. Maybe got two or three there. Yeah, it looked like the hole was there off the left tackle for just a second. And then the Quakertown defense, specifically big number 60, James Lacey, 6'2", 220-pound defensive tackle, closed up that hole real quick. Yeah, it looks like Rosselli had room to run, as you mentioned, Mike, but was only able to get... About three or four there, so it'll be second down and six. Same formation, that pistol formation. Rosselli in the backfield. This time the handoff goes to Novak. Novak powering forward. Gets it out to the 20-yard line. That'll be close to the first down marker. And it looks like they're giving it to him. Chris, an advantageous spot there. Novak, a 5'10 and 205-pound senior fullback. He is one of the two main rushers for this upper Dublin squad. Averaging 4.7 yards per carry coming into tonight. They once again go to the pistol formation. This time they're going to throw it. Slivka with pressure, and he is going to be brought down in the backfield. That is a huge sack. Number 67, Max Russell. Yeah, Max Russell who came into today as the lead player in sacks for Quaker Town. Here we have it on the replay. Take another look at it. Slivka rolls out to his left. It looked like he may have had a chance to slip away from Max Russell. Max got a hold of the jersey, ripped him right down. Huge loss. Huge loss now for Upper Dublin. Looks like it's going to bring up a second and 25. close to 25. So a loss of 15 on the play. Slifka going to throw. He hits his man, number 13, Jason Scott, who is tackled. A nice hit there by number 28, Ben Schlegel. That'll set up a third down and long. And if Schlegel doesn't make that tackle, Scott could be off to the races. There was nothing but green grass up the sideline between him and the end zone. A nice open field tackle there by Schlegel. It sets up a third down and long. Third down and 17 now for the Cardinals. Slifko going to throw to the right sideline. That pass is too high off the hands of number 11, Brian McCary. So that would bring up fourth down. McCary goes 6-2, so if it's off his hands, you know, it's definitely gotten away from Slifka a little bit. So the Cardinals are going to have to punt here. Number 28, Chris Barbera on for the punt. Very close to their own end zone. Back to Barbera on to send it away. And number 16, Tim Garlick. And number 43, back to receive the kick. Excuse me, that's number 20 to the Aiden Slysbury. Garlic closest to us, Slysbury towards the center of the field. Looks like that is an offside penalty. Offside. So that'll help out this upper Dublin team. Get a little more breathing room to send off this kick away. I was going to say a little more breathing room for the punt. Fourth and 12, they're certainly not going to go for it. Barbara. Kicks it, and it's a fair catch. 
Caught by number 23, Aiden Slisberry. And a high booming spiral. Good delivery there by Barbera. Quakertown will have it on the 34 yard line. A minute and four to go in the first quarter. It has been all Quakertown thus far. Score doesn't reflect that, but they've had the ball for most of the quarter. I, it's interesting. I was just going to say that it's, we say it's all Quakertown and the score is three to nothing, but we don't exaggerate at this point. It has been all Quakertown. Upper Dublin, real nice job of limiting the damage to three points. First play is a fake handoff and now a bubble screen, but great team tackling there by Upper Dublin to bring down Millworth. That's number 50, CJ Stoll, got out there and made the tackle. Take another look at it here. Bubble screen and Millworth had nowhere to go, just met by a sea of red right at the line of scrimmage. So that'll bring up second down and 10. Clock running at under 30 seconds now, Chris. And Quakertown gonna come to the line of scrimmage with a rece two receivers to the left. And fake handoff, it's an end around. Still on his feet is Wilmer for a moment. Picks up about four, that sets up third down and medium. And I'd love to get another look at that because I don't know if that was an end around or a true reverse. It looked like the quarterback actually handed the ball off to Christian Patrick, who gave it to, as you said, Moorworth coming around the other way. Let's take a look at it here. It was, it was Tara. Tara took the original handoff, handed off to Moorworth on the reverse. Great job by the upper Dublin defense shutting it down. Good job holding it to four yards. We're going to take a commercial break as we're at the end of the first. When we come back, second quarter action between Quakertown and Upper Dublin. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful, so we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Each one of our centers is equipped with an Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill or warm water therapy pool to unload your aching joints. From pre- and post-surgery rehab, fitness programs, and work injury rehab, PTW is your go-to therapy provider. Call or visit us online to schedule your PTW visit today. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful, so we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Welcome back to Cardinal Stadium. Quakertown ahead 3-0. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Mataraki. It is third down and six for the Panthers. Brian rolling his left. Stays on his feet here, but is wrapped up. Hard hit there, met by four defenders for the Cardinals. And it looked like the uh, first Cardinal to get there, number seven, Lucas Nina Bosler. And he came out of the pile, fired up. It's a big stop for this Cardinal defense as it gets their offense the ball back early on in the second quarter. Well, Chris, it seems to be the theme so far of this game is Quakertown moving up and down the field and big stops for the Cardinal defense. On the first drive, Quakertown had the ball on the goal line, Mike, as this punt is sent away. Back to receive for Upper Dublin is Micah Boogman stretching it to his left now. Boomin trying to get it upfield and he is tackled at the 28 yard line. But as I was saying, Mike, it is a long drive for Quakertown to start the game. They got it to the goal line, but the Cardinal defense held them to a field goal. Yeah, and every time that the Cardinals defense can hold, like you said, that initial drive, three points, every other drive has been a turnover or a punt. So. You know, excellent job by the Cardinal defense, and we talked about that in our, our lead-in, that it was going to be a defensive struggle, and right now we're 13 minutes in, and we have three points on the board. Upper Dublin has run just five plays on offense, however, as a handoff here up the middle to Novak. Little to no gain there. Maybe he got a yard. You know, Chris, there's always a theory that 
you know, uh, at the high school level, a good offense is going to beat a good defense. Both of these teams have good offenses, but right now the defense is really holding its own for both, both squads. So that'll set up a second down and 10. A defensive battle early on here in Florida, Washington. And a beautiful early fall evening for football. It really is a nice night, around 65 degrees as Slivka is going to throw here. Now he's going to run up the middle, but is brought down. A nice tackle there by number 72, Logan Vanis. That sets up third down and eight for Upper Dublin. Yeah, and Slivka just had nowhere to go with the ball that time. The entire Quakertown secondary basically picked the receiver and plastered. And, you know, at that point, there really wasn't anywhere for Slifka to go. It'll be third down and eight with nine minutes, 48 seconds to go in the quarter. Quakertown up by three. Slifka drops back. Steps up into the pocket now, throws over the middle, but it's incomplete. It was intended for Selvin Haynes, and Haynes had a lot of room to run if he could, could have caught it, but the pass was off target. Yeah, if Selvin Haynes pulls that in, he's got about three steps on Michael Terry, and he's running away from him. It's a tough incompletion there for Slifka because he did have an open man with a lot of room to run. So that's back-to-back -back three and outs for the Cardinal offense. They'll have to put it away yet again. Back to return the kick for Quakertown. Oh, and that is an unfortunate break. They're not going to have to return it, as you mentioned, Mike. And the Aaron snap. Yeah, the, the punter number 28, Chris Barbera, had to go down to his knees to feel the snap. And he didn't come off of his knees while in possession of the ball. So he's down at that point. And unfortunately, that goes into the book as a bad center snap, and Quakertown's going to take over deep in Upper Dublin territory. So an Aaron snap sets up the Panthers in solid field position. They have it on the Upper Dublin 19-yard line. But it looks like we're going to have a timeout by Upper Dublin. And with that timeout, we'd like to take this time to thank Flip City Shakes, tonight's Glove of the Game sponsor. They provided us with delicious burgers, fries, and chicken tenders. And there's more where that came from with a huge menu and large variety of milkshake choices. For all you Quakertown fans, make sure you check out the two Flip City Shake locations at the Quakertown Farmer's Market in Antiques Bar Number 2 and their new location in the main building. You can also visit their Southampton location at 233 2nd Street Pike. And I'll tell you what, that grub from Clip City Shakes really hit the spot pregame this evening. What'd you have, Mike? I had the guacamole bacon burger, and I, I was in heaven after that one. See, it's funny. I actually went with one of the melts. I went with, oh, really? went with the BCT bacon tomato, or bacon cheddar tomato melt on sourdough. Great job by those sandwich makers. That's an excellent choice, Mike. Anything really is a good choice. We didn't have any milkshakes, unfortunately, but next time I definitely want to get one. We may have to stop there on the way home. <laughs> Meanwhile, after the timeout, it'll be first and ten, nine minutes, 37 seconds to go. Handoff here for Quakertown, and up the middle goes Kristen, Christian Patrick. It's a short game. Got about three there. Interesting, though, before the, uh, that play, Brett Stover, coach of Upper Dublin, takes the timeout on defense after a turnover. Not sure if Quakertown came out with a personnel grouping or a formation that he didn't like, or if he just wanted to take that timeout and basically tell his defense, look, I know you guys have been on the field a lot. Let's take a breather, get it back together, and here we go. Terra in motion, fake handoff. Brad Bryan going up the middle. No game there. Good stop by the upper double linebacking core. Yeah, it looked like number 23, Logan Heim, got in there and kind of laid the smack down to Brian a little bit. Well, here is on the replay. It was a thick handoff to Terra. And there is Heim wrapping him up and bringing him down. So it'll be third down and six. Ball on the 15-yard line in Cardinal territory. Brian gonna roll out to his left. 
Fires. And it is complete. Caught by number 18. Also not on the roster. Brian's pass is complete, and that's a first down. That is going to be long enough for the first down, though. Well, here's Take a look at it here. Brian rolls out to his left, buys himself some time, puts it on a dime to number 18, sliding catch at the, call it the five-yard line, and Quakertown's now got a first and goal. This will be the second goal situation for the Quakertown offense. Back in the first quarter, they were stood up by Upper Dublin and forced to take a field goal. They go with a two-back set here, Tara and Patrick there. Handoff is to Tara to the right, and he scampers up the middle and into the end zone for a touchdown, 9-0 Quakertown. Interesting play call there, Chris. We're going to take a look at it here. I think what you're going to see is the motion is going to come from right to left, but the handoff is going to go back left to right. Tara is going to split that gap, center, right guard, right tackle, take it into the end zone. For Tara, it is the 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Extra point is up, and it is good. It's a 10-0 lead now for Quakertown. So, Mike, a 10-0 lead, and their defense. Interception, three and out, three and out. They're off to a hot start here on the road. Yeah, certainly not insurmountable, but to, that, to your point, Chris, it, it is a bit daunting. You know, when you've come out now and you're, you know, almost four minutes into the second quarter and you're just having almost no luck moving the ball at all outside of one huge 55-yard play in the first quarter, you know, you kind of look at that 10-point deficit and you think to yourself, okay, you know, what are we going to have to do here? But I think the, the object is just going to be to chip away. You know, it's, it's one play at a time, one drive at a time. I, I do think this is going to be critical here for the Cardinals. They do need to put some points on the board in this drive or at the very least before the end of the quarter. But again, 10 points, not insurmountable. That said, the Quakertown defense is really getting the job done. Cardinals haven't been able to get their run game going. What adjustments do they have to make here, Mike, to really get that backfield explosive in the second quarter? I, I think one of the things they could do would be some misdirection. I, I do think that if, if they want to go to a power game, they're going to have to really, really be selective with their play calls. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt if the passing game got Slifka on the move a little bit as well. Rosselli unable to bring in the kickoff. It rolls into the end zone. And that is going to be a touchback. So Upper Dublin will start at the 20-yard line. Another good kickoff by Crosset for, for Quaker Sound. And going back to your question, uh, one of the things that we're seeing out of Quaker Town is when Brian's dropping back to pass, a lot of his dropbacks include some sort of play action, bootleg, rollout, something that's going to keep him away from the Upper Dublin pass rush. Upper Dublin, Slifka, has kind of been more stationary in the pocket, and maybe they need to get him moving as well. First play on this drive is a handoff. Short game there. So that'll set up second down and nine. Game two on the play, second and eight. Yeah, we're selling second and eight. Yeah, it looked like we're selling got about two on that one, so call it second and eight. We're selling broke a 55 yard play open in the first quarter, but since then it's been nothing for this upper double on offense. So if we run the wall and another high pass, this time intended for Jason Scott, falls incomplete. Slivka has been off the mark, missing most of his receivers high. And, and it looked like on that one, the timing was just off. It looked like Slivka didn't have a real good grip on the ball, but he knew throwing from the hash marks on the near side of the field to the numbers on the far side, he was going to have to get it out quick, and he did, but it looked like he just didn't have a real good grip on the ball, and it took off on him. So that sets up third down and eight for the Cardinal offense. 7.25 to go in the quarter. Slivka rolling out to his left. Has time. Now cuts it back right. 
Can't get the block, and he's tackled right around the line of scrimmage. So this will be the third straight three and out for the Cardinals. And I think uh, Slifka may have given up on that play just a little bit too early. When he brought it back to his right, he had Selvin Haynes coming back to help him out a little bit. And I think Selvin was open. Slifka was busy sidestepping the rush and didn't see him. But better to punt it away. It's a line drive. Touches down just shy of the 40. And it will be down at the 39. So a good punt there by Barbera. I wish I could get my golf shots to check up the way that that punt did. I think that punt hit the ground, bounced twice in the same spot, and sat right there. Definitely an ideal layup <laughs> for Barbera. So they'll set up the Quaker Town offense with the ball on Upper Dublin's, uh, excuse me, on their own 39 with 6.43 to go in the quarter. Two backfield set. It's a pitch and now a reverse. Real North with it here. Cuts back and now some yellow flags fly. We're likely going to get a holding call. It's, and it's either, it's either going to be a hold or perhaps a block in the back. It looked like number 16, the receiver on that side, Tim Garlick. I, okay, so they did get him for the hold, but it could have been a hold or a block in the back. They went back to that reverse that we saw just a couple series ago, and certainly Upper Dublin wasn't biting, and the holding penalty is going to take it back another 10. So that will be first down and 20 now for Quaker Town. We'll see how this affects their offense, which has looked pretty solid early on here, Mike. Interesting. We do have two penalties, and I had mentioned that it could be a hole, it could be a, a block in the back or a clip. The officials called two penalties on that. They called the hold on Quaker Town, which Upper Dublin declined, but then they called the clip. We'll see the referee getting the signal here. It's the decline hold, the clip, which was accepted, which is a 15-yard penalty. It's going to push Quaker Town back even further. So Upper Dublin catching a break here. A 15-yard loss. No loss of down for Quaker Town, but now they have a ways to go to pick up a first. Yeah, first and 25 here. They come out with three receivers split to the right. Patrick in the backfield. And it's a handoff to him. Ooh. Nice tackle there as it's a gain of about one. That's a big hit by number 56. Rob Harold for the Quaker Town 26-yard line. Upper Dublin, and that could be a candidate for our All-American Sporting Goods hard hit of the game. Well, here it is on the replay as we'll bring it up in just a moment. Up the middle and... Wow, just met right there, brought to the ground. That will be. Wow, second down play, throw to the sideline by Brian. It's complete. To number 18. That's number 18, who we do not have on our roster sheet, but that will set up a third down and manageable. And we'll go back to that. It was our All-American Sporting Goods hard hit of the game. For all of your sports equipment and apparel, shop at All American Sporting Goods located at the corner of Cotman and Tabor in Northeast Philadelphia. For more information, give them a call at 215-342-6141. That's 215-342-6141. And there was the hit on Patrick a few moments ago, but now it's a third down and five for Quakertown. Brian and Roy to his right. Pass is skipped and incomplete. So this will set up fourth down. Quaker Town will have to punt it away. That looked like number 22, Skylar Hackett, got some hands up in the air and knocked that down. Excellent job by the Upper Dublin defense. Quaker Town went first and 25. They got big chunks of it back on second and third down. But Upper Dublin holds on fourth down and forces the punt. Sherry sends it away. It's a short punt. Going to roll in favor of Quaker Town and be down at the 25-yard line of Upper Dublin. Like Marcus Held got down the field and down that. So with 4.57 left in the quarter, 
It's a 10 nothing lead for Quaker Town. And Upper Dublin, Mike, three and out their last three drives, really struggling on offense. Oh, and it's interesting because Upper Dublin deferred in the first half, and they will get the ball first in the second half. So if they can take some time off the clock here, put points on the board, and then come back out in the second half with the ball and answer again, they could turn the tide of the game, but they need to get something going here. Now a whistle and a timeout by the Cardinals. And that is now their second one of the first half already. So with that time out, I'd like to once again thank Flip City Shakes, tonight's grub of the game sponsor. They provided us with delicious burgers, fries, and chicken tenders. And there's more where that came from with a huge menu and large variety of milkshake choices. Mike, it's a 10-0 lead for Quakertown. Upper Dublin's offense has been stalled for the entire first half. And if you are this Cardinal squad, what are you going to try to do adjustment-wise to get your offense active here towards the tail end of the first half? It's tough to say. I mean, we've seen Slifka try to throw from the pocket. We've seen Slifka try to throw on the move. We've tried to, you know, we've seen some power run. We've seen some outside running from Upper Dublin. And some of it's worked, some of it is not. I think what they need to do is they just need to find something that they're comfortable with. The entire offense right now just doesn't look comfortable on the field, and they need to get into some sort of a rhythm. Three straight three and outs before this drive. They started on their own 25-yard line. Man in motion. Slivka met short of the line of scrimmage, so he'll be taken down for a sack. Pocket collapsed immediately on him. He had nowhere to go with that play. Uh, he was looking for Zillin Slotnikoff in the, on the, uh, the left flat, and the corner on that side did a really nice job of just staying home and reading the quarterback's eyes, and Frankly, there was nothing there. It's a good thing that Slifka tucked that in and tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. One yard loss on the play. That sets up second down and 11. Two receivers to Slifka's right. It's a low snap and now batted at the line of scrimmage. James Lacey, number 60, got a hand up there and knocked that one down. The big 6'2 sophomore with the, the long reach and the big pause just batted that one right out of the air. So that sets up third down and 11 now for Upper Dublin. This Quaker Town defense has been impressive throughout the first half, looking to force a fourth straight three and out. And there is a flag. And we're going to have a, a flag on Upper Dublin for having too many men in the huddle. Substitution. Legal substitution. Look like number 13, Jackson Scott, was trying to run off of the field before they came up to the line of scrimmage, and it's going to move him back five. five it's been an abysmal start five. offensively for this Cardinal squad, and this is not helping their cause. Got to be frustrating for Coach Brett Stover right now. And this is not what we're used to seeing out of the Cardinal offense either. You know, this is a team that we, we talked about averages almost 27 points a game. You look at their, their games this year, they put up 28 at Norristown, they put up 32 against Central, they put up 34 against Hatboro Horsham. Even in a loss to Penn Charter, they put up 17, and they put up 20 last week at Cheltenham. The penalty was actually picked up, so it is third down and 11 now. Slivka Steps up in the pocket, still on his feet here for a moment, but ultimately going to be sacked again in the backfield. And I'll tell you what, Kevin, if we can take another look at this, the pass rush for Quakertown was ferocious, and it's just coming in waves. Slifka drops back. He avoids one group of rushers, steps up, runs right into a second group of oncoming pass rushers and down he goes. Nowhere to go on that play for Slivka, so now it'll be a punt. Once again, that's four straight three and outs for the Cardinal offense. Barbera gets it away. It's a high punt to the middle of the field. Caught by number 42, not listed on a roster for Quakertown. And he is tackled at the 48-yard line of 
Quaker Town. And that is Dennis Pierce, number 42. Sorry about that. We uh, were given that information after the game started there. Dennis Pierce picked up that punt. So that sets up the Quaker Town offense. They've got some time. Three minutes, 31 seconds to go in the half. They've moved the ball well effectively on a couple drives. They're going to go with that two-back set, which has been performing well thus far. It's going to be Brian on the carry. He gets out for a gain of about four or five. And we said it was a two-headed monster in the backfield coming into the broadcast, Mike, but it's really a three-headed demon because, Brad, uh, because Brian's going to take the ball and run on those plays. He's really a running quarterback before he's going to look to throw. Uh, you're absolutely right. He's uh, kind of out of the mode of a, a Trace McSorley from Penn State where he can throw and he can throw well, but he is also much more of a threat with the legs. Now a handoff here goes to Patrick. He powers forward. Looks like he got the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Patrick's tackled at the 42-yard line. And, and they're going to give him the first down. That will move the chains. Yep. First down, stop the clock at 2.52. Now we're running at 2.47. Plenty of time for Quaker Town. In the backfield is Patrick and Tara. It's a handoff to Tara, and he goes forward for a gain of maybe two. Michael Tara on the carry. He pulls his way for two yards, it's second and eight. And a pretty ferocious tackle there by Jacob Rossman for Upper Dublin. Second down and eight now, clock running. Two minutes, eight seconds to go in the half. Brian going to take it from the shotgun now. He has time. Looking deep to the left. His pass is for Terra. And Terra somehow comes down with it. That will be a first down. And Terra wins the jump ball over number 11, Brian McCary. Yeah, and like you said, Brian just threw it up there, and I mean, that was the absolute epitome of a 50-50 ball. Well, here is. Take a look at it here. You know, Brian puts it up. Tara goes up, fights McCarry for it, and quite frankly, just takes it away from the defender. McCarry had great position. Now the first down handoff goes to Tara. He is met in the backfield. Excuse me, that was Patrick who took the handoff, so no gain on the play. A flag on the field. We'll see what the call is. There is a flag on the field. Looks like this is going to be on the offense. It's holding, and that will move the Panthers back 10 yards. And that is absolutely a big break for Upper Dublin. So with a minute 34 to go in the half, Quaker Town will be moved back to the 33-yard line. It's going to be a shotgun set here for Brian. And he is just able to get rid of the ball. Would have been a big sack. Terra has it now. Streaking up the middle. Big game there for Terra. So it was nearly a broken play in the backfield. Ends up being a big gain on first down for the Panthers. And you're going to see here play action, he's basically in the grasp, shoves it off to Tara. Tara then takes it up the middle, and if it's not for number 89, Brody Barasa for Upper Dublin, Tara's going right up the middle to the house. So a timeout now taken by Quaker Town. Stops the clock with a minute and five seconds to go. And Kevin, it's, it's amazing to me that they didn't call him in the grasp on that. But they, I mean, because obviously he was, he was wrapped up. He was wrapped up and he was going down and just at the last second he just shoveled it off and Tara took it and off he went. A very creative play by the quarterback, Brad Bryan, who has played well tonight. 
Mike, we've been, I've been really impressed. I, I can't speak for you, but I've been really impressed by how he's handled the pressure from this upper Dublin defense. No, no question about it. He's, he's had a lot of poise. Um, I definitely think the play calling has helped him quite a bit. Like I said, there's, there's nothing that's coming out of their offense that is just a straight three-step or five-step or seven-step drop. Everything is either off of motion, off of play action, they're moving him around nicely, giving him passing lanes and giving him time. It's going to be second down and eight now. Ryan rolling to the right, and now he'll tuck it in and run. Got a couple yards there, just short of the first down marker. We're at about 53 now, so it'll be interesting to see if they use another timeout or they just let it run. No timeout yet. Clock is moving. 43 seconds to go in the half. Third and seven now after the run. Ryan firing left. Pass is caught by Terra. Trying to fight forward. And he is stopped. Tackled at the 10-yard line. So he will pick up the first down. And interesting, he picked up the first down so that the clock would have stopped on the first down, but Quakertown elects to take the timeout anyway so that they can probably, I'd have to assume that this is, let's get two plays in and go to our hurry up for this last 22 seconds and roughly a shade over 10 yards to go. Once again, is proud to recognize Well, here on the replay, is that pass, Ryan looking right, hits Tara, there's Brad Ryan, and Tara fights forward for the first down. One of the few times that we've seen Brian just take a snap, drop back three steps and fire it. The, the previous play we saw him on the move out to the right, that one sat tall in the pocket and delivered a strike. Most of his targets have been to Tara tonight, so it's a comfortable target is that big running back out of the back, backfield. Yeah, and if our SFBN audience doesn't know who Michael Tara was coming into the game, they will certainly know coming out of the game. I feel like he's been pretty much the story of the Quaker Town offense tonight. Tara with a touchdown in the second quarter. He's had a couple receptions. He's done it out of the backfield on handoffs. Big reason why the Panthers have an early lead in this game. 22 seconds remaining in the half. Now, we were told that he was a do-it-all back for them, and that absolutely has been the case. He has come as advertised, and now timeout on the field. This will be by Upper Dublin, so they'll burn their final timeout. Julian, you got anything that's like 20 seconds? Perhaps. Upper Dublin did not like their defensive look there, so they'll talk it over. Now, it's interesting. In the, uh, the games last week, again, we mentioned that Upper Dublin beat Sheltonham 20-7. Quakertown beat Wissahickon 42-12. Both of those games were you know, get back on the right path type of games. It was, you know, we, we talked in our, our opening, Kevin, about how both teams lost on September 21st. It was their first and only loss of the season. Quakertown has played one more game. They're five and one overall, two and one in the conference. Upper Dublin, four and oh, four and one, two and oh in the conference. Quakertown looking to make some strides in the conference by laying a Loss on Upper Dublin here. Let's we'll see how it shakes out. Brad Bryan now going to throw for the end zone, but that pass is off target. Had a man open, but overshot him. Number 18 falls incomplete. But as you mentioned, Mike, this would be a big win on the road for this Quakertown Panther squad in what's shaping up to be a tough divisional race. Yeah, and it looked like he was looking for number 16, Tim Garlick, the junior wide receiver. And trying to really make a statement and go in 17 nothing to the half as opposed to 10 to nothing. Looks like they're going to have time for a couple more plays. Let's see what uh, 
what they dig into the uh, the offensive playbook with. Well, Brian not going to be under center. It's actually Wilmers who takes the snap, and he is going to scamper forward for a gain of six, tackled at the four-yard line. So a trick play there by the Quaker Town offense. A little wildcat action. You had the quarterback Brian lined up in the slot. The wide receiver Wilmers in the quarterback wildcat position. Direct snap off of left tackle, took it down to about the two-yard line, and Quaker Town calls their final timeout. 11.4 seconds to go. You got to figure it's going to be one play, whether it's through the air or on the ground. And if it's through the air, they may be able to run the field goal unit on the, the field should they not get the touchdown. If it's on the ground, they got to score. The time's going to run out in a half. With that in mind, do you run it here with the, the, the running back tandem, or do you try to go through the air? If it's me personally, I'm going through the air. They're on the near hash mark. I'm probably going to throw something towards the back of the end zone to the far side of the field. It may take a bit longer to develop, but you give yourself more space over there. And if the ball falls incomplete, you then should have roughly three to three and a half seconds with a clock stop to get your field goal unit onto the field for what would then be a the equivalent of an extra point. It's going to be third down and goal. Ball is spotted between the two and three yard line. From the two yard line. And of course all that discussion and they come out in a, a tight bunch formation. They got Tara and Patrick in the backfield. Now a man goes in motion. It's going to be a pitch to the right. Tara going to throw it for the end zone. Incomplete. I like the play call, but they just were unable to execute. So I wasn't wrong. It was a pass to the end zone on the far side, but it was delivered by Tara on the halfback option as opposed to Brian from the quarterback position. Now decision time. 6.6 .6 seconds to go. Do they kick the field goal or do they go for it? Looks like they are bringing the field goal team onto the U, uh, field goal unit onto the field, I should say. So this will be the second field goal attempt of the night for a cross set. It'll be a 20-yard attempt. Lining it up at the 10, it'll be a 20-yard attempt. As I mentioned, Kevin, it's or Chris, excuse me. <laughs> it's all good. Our, our other broadcast partner. As the kick is up, and it is good, it's a 13-0 lead for Quakers. Yeah, the, the equivalent of a, an extra point, and only three seconds left on the clock. Shout out to our other broadcast partner, uh, Kevin Fettinger. Sure, he's listening in tonight, and you're doing an awesome job, buddy. Uh, thank you, my friend Kevin. If you're listening at home, we miss you here. Can't wait to have you back next week. So it's a 13-0 lead now for Quaker Town. Offense has had some balance throughout, but the real story tonight, Mike, has been the defense for the Panthers. Uh, absolutely, without question. I mean, we, we talked a little bit at the beginning that we, we thought it could be a defensive game, but both teams did have some stars on the offensive side of the ball. So while it was going to have a defensive tone, we certainly didn't think Upper Dublin at home was going to go through the entire first half with a goose egg in the points column. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see what sort of adjustments Coach Brett Stover and his offensive staff can make at halftime. They have the ball first in the second half. They're going to have to come out, get some points on the board, and reset the tone. Three seconds to go in the half. Panthers to kick it away. Likely just going to be a squib kick that will take us into halftime. Rosselli back deep to return it for Upper Dublin. And it is a squib kick. Picked up by number seven. That's Lucas Nilo Bosler, who is then tackled by the far sideline. And that will take us to halftime. Quaker Town ahead 13 to nothing on the road against the Upper Dublin Cardinals. We're going to take a break. When we come back, me and Mike will recap the first half. Hi, my name is Christian Barrett, and I'm a physical therapist as well as a clinical supervisor here at PTW Lansdale. And I'm coming to talk to you about concussions, uh, how they relate to sports, their treatment, and uh, overall management. Um, now, concussions have gained popularity in recent years, uh, particularly due to the interest of the NFL in terms of research and 
uh, treatment of them. Now, it's important to note that uh, concussions do not just occur in the NFL. They occur across all levels of competition. In particular, there were 3.8 million concussions uh, in sports last year. Now, we're talking just about sports now, um, but the concussions can occur throughout a variety of situations, whether it's a motor vehicle accident, uh, an injury in work, a slip or fall. Um, and you know, here at PTW Lansdale, we can um, treat no matter what the mechanism of injury was. Now, it's important to note that of understanding what concussions are, how they occur, what the symptoms are, and how we treat them. So it's important to have trained uh, health professionals. Um, and as physical therapists, we can uh, participate kind of in that uh, treatment and management of concussions. So to recognize um, some of the symptoms, some things you might see are mental fogginess, dizziness, nausea, um, sensitivity to light, sound, um, as well as sleep disturbances and behavioral patterns. And, and important thing to note about sleep disturbances, maybe just not sleeping enough, but you might notice that someone is sleeping too much, you know, 16 to 18 hours a day or wherever it may be. Um, so once we recognize these symptoms and we say, okay, a concussion has occurred, now we need to know how to treat them. And as physical therapists here at PTW Lansdale, we can treat these uh, symptoms through a variety of different um, treatment patterns, whether it's uh, vestibular rehabilitation, which is working on balance, which is usually affected post-concussion, uh, working on cognitive therapy to help with the mental fogginess so someone can return to their full cognitive function, um, as well as a graded uh, return to aerobic activity. Now these are athletes uh, for the most part uh, that sustain most concussions and uh, we need a return to activity eventually. So it's important to monitor their symptoms, monitor their blood pressure, monitor their heart rate so that we can safely get them back on the field, um, on the ice or on the court, wherever it may be. Um, so as physical therapists we do play uh, an integral part of managing these concussions. Um, so here at PTW Lansdale, we are we are equipped and and ready to get you back on the court or ice, like I talked about, or back to your job as a factory worker, um, or just back to your daily life doing activities that you enjoy. Stoll Bonds and Insurance specializes in the construction and business industry. For all your bonding and construction insurance needs, please go to www.stollagency.com. Welcome back to Cardinal Stadium in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania, alongside Mike Mataraki. I'm Christopher Markowitz, and in the first half, Mike, it was all Quakertown. Time of possession unofficially 17 minutes for the Panthers, 7 for Upper Dublin, and plays run. The Panthers ran 45 plays to Upper Dublin's just 14. Well, you, you said it all right there, Chris. When, when you have a, a, a lopsided time of possession, you know, almost 3-to-1 ratio, and the play number of plays run is a three to one ratio the fact that it's 13 to nothing or only 13 to nothing in favor of Quakertown you know says a little bit about the upper Dublin defense but upper Dublin very lucky to only be down 13 starting the second half they deferred to start the game did upper Dublin they'll receive the kickoff here trailing 13 to nothing sending it away for the Panthers is Gavin Croset. And his kick is short down the far sideline, dribbles out of bounds, and this will be... Looks like they're spotting it at the 32. The uh, directional kick, they will throw the flag there. It is a kickoff out of bounds, illegal procedure. There it is, illegal procedure, that will give Upper Dublin the ball an advantageous position to start their drive in the second half but Mike 14 plays for the Upper Dublin offense in the first half their first drive it looked promising to start Rosselli had a 55 yard reception but then an interception the play after that and since then four three and outs yeah and it, it's just been a situation where every time you've thought that an Upper Dublin ball carrier has had daylight the hole has closed Every time that you've thought that Mike Slifka has had time to throw, suddenly the pass rush was on top of him. He's eluded pass rushers only to run into others. The Quakertown defense tonight really just smothering. Ball on the 36-yard line of Quakertown. Handoff to Novak, and he gets no gain there. 
Running game continues to struggle here tonight for the Cardinals. And that was 74, Ashton Hurd, the senior defensive end, got into the backfield and wound up stopping that play at the line of scrimmage. So that'll set up second down and 10 now for Upper Dublin. Two receivers split out to the right and left of Slivka. He's going to drop back to pass. Far sideline hits his man. That's Rosselli. And he is out of bounds for a gain of eight. And will set up third down and two. And Chris, if there was ever a time when a quarterback needed a completion, that completion by Slivka was the time. That's got to help really just get his confidence back for the second half as he really, really struggled the ball, or th excuse me, struggled throwing the ball in the first half. A couple Aaron passes in the first half, missing receivers high for Slivka, but a nice completion there for a gain of eight. On third and two, it's going to be a handoff to Rosselli, and he powers forward for a first down, just the second first down of the night for the Cardinals offense. An excellent job blocking by the interior of the upper double and offensive line. The center, big number 54, Aman Orleans, really got a good push up the middle there. Orlina, a junior listed at 6'4", 255. In his second straight year at that center position here for Upper Dublin. Now the snap came a little early. Slivka wasn't expecting it, and we'll have a whistle. This is probably going to be a false start. Interesting. You said he wasn't expecting the snap, and I think some of the other members of the Upper Dublin offense weren't expecting it either because, as you said, we do have a false start penalty. So the false start will move the Cardinals back five yards. First down and 15. Ball will be placed on the Upper Dublin 42-yard line. So just when the Cardinals were getting into rhythm offensively, Mike, a penalty pushes them backwards. Now let's see if uh, the fact that it's still first down allows them to uh, maintain some offensive rhythm here. Jet sweep to Rosselli. Short gain there. Got about four yards. It'll be second down and 11. And tried to fight his way back to the original line of scrimmage. Approaching midfield, some positive yardage so far for Upper Dublin. Take another look at it here. The jet sweep and the handoff to Rosselli cuts it back inside and runs into number 27, Micah Kunkel for Quakertown, as well as that man again, Michael Terra. And now with an empty backfield, Slifka throws to the close sideline. It's complete to Selvin Haynes, who picks up about... Eight or nine yards. It's going to be third down and short again for Upper Dublin. And that's two consecutive completions for Slifka, maybe finding a little bit of rhythm. And that will set up a third and short here. Slifka looking a lot better in the second half. Third down and two to go. We'll see if they go on the ground here. Looks like a power formation. It's going to be a handoff to Rosselli. Goes right, has the first down. Gets tackled by number 20, Delbert Ross, but not before he's able to move the chains. And he had the first down, and it looked like he may have had more. All of a sudden, just as he broke that line to gain, he got smacked backwards, but first down for Upper Dublin and deepest penetration into Quakertown territory tonight. Another handoff here, this time to the fullback, Novak, who rumbles forward for a short gain. Got about two yards, second down and eight. Gain two on the play, second and eight. It's been the combination of Novak and Rosselli all season long for Upper Dublin. Weren't able to produce much in the first half, but they're looking good to start half number two thus far. Yeah, inside of the Quakertown 40-yard line. New set of downs, Let's see what they can do. Empty backfield again for Slivka, throws it close sideline. Nice catch there by Zillin Zlotnikov, had to go up top to get it. So that'll set up third down and about three. Now Chris, you mentioned it earlier though that some of the problems that Slivka has been having tonight is, you know, the way we talk about with pitchers sometimes, they're wild high. 
and, and Slivka looks to be just a little bit wild high tonight. Zlotnikov went up, pulled that one down for him, and sets up a manageable third down. Now he goes deep over the middle, pass intended for Haynes, but it's broken up. Excellent coverage there by Tyler Merworth. And I think Slifka may have put just a little too much air under that one. He had Selvin Haynes behind the secondary. The air under it allowed Merworth some time to get back there and break it up. So that'll set up fourth down and three. And Upper Dublin is going to go for it. It's going to be a handoff. Looked like Novak got the ball. And it's going to come down to the spot. He got about two on the carry. Let's see what they give him here. And there was a real, real strong push in there. And they'll give him the first down. Look like number 66. Brian Durr for Upper Dublin. They ran right in behind him, and he got a huge push at the end of that, and it's enough to, again, move the chains. Durr, a 5'10 senior guard listed at 215 pounds. That first down sets up Upper Dublin within the Quakertown 30-yard line as this handoff goes to Novak, short gain there. That'll bring up second down to nine. It looked like Ben Schlegel came in there and broke up the play before it could really get started. And then big number 67, Max Russell, finished it off. But again, positive yardage for Upper Dublin in just a little bit at a time now inside of the Quakertown 30-yard line. And a real good possibility that they could come out of this drive with some points. Possession time was an issue in the first half for Upper Dublin, but they've had the ball for nearly five minutes to start the second half. Slivka, a handoff now. That's Novak, Novak right powering forward, got a couple yards there. That'll set up third down and manageable. And we do have a flag on the play, and Chris, what I'm looking at here is possibly an illegal procedure or an illegal shift. It looked like one man shifted and was not set before the motion then went the other way. And uh, it, it does appear to be a five-yard illegal procedure penalty. That is the call. It's going to move Upper Dublin back. So instead of what would have been third down and short, it'll now be a second down and 13 for the Cardinals. It, now with the way Upper Dublin has been moving the ball in the second half, certainly still very manageable. Upper Dublin going with an empty backfield now. Three receivers to Slivka's left, two to his right. He takes the snap, looking left, pump figs, now rolls out towards the left, and he's got a lane to run. Slivka gonna pick up the first down and more. A nice tackle on the sideline to keep him from going towards the end zone, but a big gain for the quarterback. Yeah, excellent pursuit by Nick Levinsky, the middle linebacker. Six foot, 230 pound senior, but Slivka, displayed some excellent speed as we take another look at it here. Pump faked and there was nothing there. And frankly, he just beat Levinsky to the corner, turned it upfield, gets inside the 20, and it's another Cardinal first down. Slivka rolling to his right, gonna throw again. This time he has his man, that's Haynes. Haynes makes a move and is down inside the five, right near the goal line. And that, that's always a positive play when you can get Selvin Haynes in space. So that's going to set up a first down and goal for the Cardinals on the three-yard line. And Chris, this looks like an entirely different upper double in offense. It certainly does. They've had the ball for close to six minutes now to open the second half. First play is going to be a handoff, a powerful... Effort forward, and it's Novak who dives in, crosses the goal line for a score, and just like that, the Cardinals are right back in this one, Mike. Now we'll take another look at it here, but as you said, Novak, power formation. They lined up, and they just decided they weren't going to be denied. Came out, took the handoff from Slifka from under center, moves off the right guard, and literally just powered his way into the end zone for six for the Cardinals. Kick, is, kick up. is up, and it is good. So after an abysmal first half offensively, Upper Dublin is in for a score. 
And on top of that, Kevin, they used almost half of this third quarter. 6.28 to go in the quarter. Upper Dublin had the ball for just seven minutes offensively in the first half. They get, have it for five minutes and 32 seconds on that drive, which ran for 13 plays. That is a, uh, a approximately 13, 14 play drive in five minutes and 32 seconds to put a touchdown on the board, and they've cut the deficit to six. Overcame a couple penalties as well. So Slivka with some nice passes there. The running game came alive. Upper Dublin with their first score of the game. Now they'll kick it off to Quakertown for the first time in this second half. Trying to get the crowd into this one. Meanwhile, we have a player down on the field. So we're going to take a break, but when we come back, Upper Dublin fighting their way back into this one. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful, so we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Each one of our centers is equipped with an Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill or warm water therapy pool to unload your aching joints. From pre- and post-surgery rehab, fitness programs, and work injury rehab, PTW is your go-to therapy provider. Call or visit us online to schedule your PTW visit today. Welcome back to Cardinal Stadium in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Injured player being helped off the field for Quakertown, and it looked to be Michael Terra. And we've called his name any number of times tonight. If Terra can't return for Quakertown, that's going to be a blow both offensively and defensively for the Panthers. Christopher Markowitz alongside Mike Mataraki. It's a 13-7 game in favor of the Panthers. Six minutes, 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. It was all Quakertown in the first half, Mike, but Upper Dublin with an impressive drive to open the second half. And when Upper Dublin won the toss and deferred, they wanted the ball first in the second half. This is exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to take the ball first in the second half, drive down the field, run some clock, and put the ball in the end zone. The only problem is they didn't think they were going to be doing it from 13 down to start the second half. I'm sorry, number 28, Chris Barbera. Barbera to kick it off here. Back to receive for Quakertown is Christian Patrick, along with Tim Garlic. Kick is up. It's a high one. Taking at the one. And an excellent job of coverage there as it was Brady Williams on the return, but he is barely able to get back to the 15. And, and I don't know if you heard me mention it there, Chris, but I kind of under my breath said taking on the one. I'm very surprised that they didn't let that bounce into the end zone and, and, and try to just take it for the touchback rather than return that. And they only were able to get the ball out to the 17-yard line. Ball in the 17 for Quakertown. Their offense was solid in the first half. Brad Bryan did an excellent job leading his troops on the field. Had a good look from their ground game as well. But with Terra out right now, we'll see how that impacts the Panthers. First play is going to be a pass. And immediately met in the backfield on the screen is number 20, Delbert Ross, for no gain. And the Upper Dublin defense was all over that one. It's a great read. And now we have an injured player hobbling off the field for Quakertown. Looks like number 88, the tight end, Matt Pavone. And that would be another huge loss for the Panthers. Pavone in a lot of pain on the sideline. Hope that he's all right. But that's two plays now in a row for Quakertown where they've lost key players on their offense. And you can't tell me, though, that that touchdown didn't get this upper dub when defense motivated. They came out, they read a play, they made a hit, and now it's second and 11. Lone back in the backfield is Patrick. Brian going to step up, fire it deep down the right sideline. Has his man a nice diving catch. That's number 16, Tim Garlic, on the catch. A huge gain. 
So Brad Ryan had time, stepped up in the pocket and delivers a beautiful deep ball. Here it is on the replay, Mike. Now Brian steps up into the pocket and launches it. Garlic's got three steps on the defenders up that right sideline and he hauls that in for a, about a 30-yard gain on his 13th reception of the season. 34 yards and now a pitch here to Patrick. Penalty flies, Patrick still on his feet, now tackled at the line of scrimmage. We'll see what the call is, look to be a hold. I'll tell you what, Chris, other than giving up that long pass to Garlic, the defensive intensity for Upper Dublin has really, really picked up. You could see it in the energy of the players on the field, and even more importantly is the energy of the players on the sideline. Well, I think what helps, Mike, is in the first half, you're on the field defensively for 17 minutes, 45 plays in comparison to just 14 for the opposing defense. Now your offense goes out to start the half with a long drive. You've got to be hyped up. You had all that time to rest out there. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head. When you're out there defensively for 45 plays in the first half, you've got to be spent. Now first and 20 after the hold. Brad Bryan rolling out right. Fires out of bounds, incomplete. Looked like he was looking for garlic again, but uh, nothing there and took the safe route and tossed that one out of bounds. Five minutes, three seconds to go in the quarter. It'll be second down and 19. Quakertown comes to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to the left and right of Brian. Patrick in the backfield. Brian going to take the snap, looking to pass here. Has time. Now he rolls to his left. He'll flip it out of bounds, just getting rid of it, and that will bring up third down and 19. And that is a very, very smart play by Brian. He knew that he had number 20, Delbert Ross, in the area. He made sure that he got outside of the tackle box. His flip went beyond the line of scrimmage, out of bounds, with a player in the area. Sometimes high school kids, you just can't teach that, that type of intangible. Very smart play there by Brad Bryan. So that'll bring up third down and 19. Quakertown has it on their own 42 yard line. Four minutes, 57 se 56 seconds, excuse me, to go in the quarter. Ryan takes it, it's a high snap, but he handles it well, fires deep down the right sideline. Incomplete, but now a penalty flag flies. Pass was intended for Gavin Crosette. And this is going to be a roughing the passer penalty on Matthew Shields for Upper Dublin, and I do not agree with this call whatsoever. And that's going to be costly as it will be an automatic first down. And excuse me, that was actually Andre Faltz, the intended receiver, on the play. But the roughing the passer call, as you said, Mike, that's a, that's a tough one for this upper Dublin defense. Questionable. I mean, Brian took a shot, but it's not as if the, the shot was egregiously late. They called pass interference and the personal foul for roughing the passer. Either way, it's 15 yards for Quakertown and an automatic first down, but I, I personally don't believe that roughing the passer was, was warranted. So what was about to be a punt away for... Quakertown turns into a first down. Ball will be spotted at the Upper Dublin 43-yard line. Cardinal defense looked solid on this drive, but they're bailed at the Quakertown offense is bailed out by two penalties on that play. Now it's going to be a handoff. Up the middle goes Patrick. Patrick breaking tackles, still on his feet. Has it for a first down and more. Tackled inside the 30-yard line. And just something to keep an eye on going forward with the with Michael Terra apparently being on the sidelines now injured. We don't have a report on him just yet, but Christian Patrick is getting the majority of the work as a ball carrier. They've been using Delbert Ross in the backfield as a blocking back, and he got blown up the last time they threw the ball. So let's see if that doesn't come back to haunt them a little bit. Now another handoff to Patrick. He goes forward for a gain of about one. They actually give him two now as he fell forward and got some extra yardage there. Second down and eight. 
And as you mentioned, Mike, it's been Patrick getting the bulk of the carries now with Terra out of the game due to injury. But he has looked solid throughout, and he also is a capable running back. He averages more yards per carry than Terra. Yeah, and we talked at the outset about the Quakertown offense, at least in terms of the rushing attack, being a two-headed monster, or as you said, a three-headed beast. Certainly Patrick plays a big part of that. And now this time a pitch out to number 20, Delbert Ross. He's tackled right around the first down marker. We'll see what the spot gives him. He looks to be just short. And we just talked about Ross a, a couple seconds ago being their replacement for Tara. Take another look at this here now. Got around the right side, slipped a couple of tackles, and picked up a nice gain. Ross is a name we've said a couple times here on the broadcast tonight, Mike. Doing a good job filling in in the backfield, but he's also played solid at the cornerback position on defense. Nah, no question about it. So it'll be third down and one for Quakertown. This is going to be a handoff to Ross, and he's got it for a first down and more as he spills outwards towards the 10-yard line. Blocked up very, very well by the right side of that Quakertown offensive line, and Seems like whenever there has been a short yardage situation and Quakertown has needed one or two yards, they've been working off of that right side from the center to the guard to the tackle. So that run sets up first down and 10 on the upper Dublin 14. Handoff again to Ross. This time he's met at the line of scrimmage. Stays on his feet for a moment, but is wrapped up for no gain. Now they tried that right side again, and the upper Dublin defense was ready for it. So that'll set up second down and 10. Two minutes, 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Upper Dublin opened up the second half with a 14-play touchdown score. But Quakertown has responded with a long drive here. Ball on the 14-yard line. Two receivers to Brian's left and right. Takes the snap, he's gonna run. It's a design run. Flag flies. Brian carries it for close to a first down, but I got a feeling this one's coming back, Mike. And I have a feeling you're right. The design quarterback draw, you called it, partner. Design run all the way, but a holding call, and I think everyone in the stadium caught that one, as did Mr. Official. Yes, he did. This is going to be a 10-yard penalty on Quakertown, their second holding call of this drive. So it moves them back. And it's going to negate a, what looked to be about a, a 9 to 10 yard run by the quarterback. On top of it, it puts you just outside field goal range potentially here as the ball is now on the 23 yard line. Yeah, from this spot, any attempt would be about a 40 yarder. Not sure if they want to try that tonight. This is going to be a handoff to Patrick. Maybe got a yard. That'll bring up third down and 17. And he got wrapped up by Brody Belasa, and Brody kind of hung on until he had some help, and they stopped him right at the line of scrimmage. So Upper Dublin gives up just a yard on that handoff. The defense has played well in spurts on this drive, Mike, but it's been penalties that have killed them and kept Quakertown alive. They have a chance here with third down and 17 to get their offense the ball back. But well, this is going to be interesting with Wormuth Wild lining up. Wildcat again. And he's just going to take it and run. Wormuth met near the line of scrimmage, got about a yard or two, but it's a big stop for Upper Dublin. And they were ready for it that time. I think the first time that they ran that it may have caught Upper Dublin off guard a little bit, especially given that, you know, Brian is a single-digit number. Wormuth is a single-digit number. Quarterback in the backfield wearing a single digit. That time, not so much. Now, lining up for a field goal, 37-yarder. It'll be Crissette. Kick is up. It's a line drive. It is no good. Wide left. So a huge defensive stop for Upper Dublin. They'll get the ball back with a chance to either tie it or take the lead. And that is a big stop, Mike. Upper Dublin, the crowd really getting into it here in the third quarter. Uh, no question, Chris. And that becomes a situation where 
you know, at, at this level, when a kicker comes onto the field and they see that they're taking the shot from 35, 36, 37 yards, e even going back to 40 plus, they feel like they need to kick it harder than they normally do. When in reality, their normal kicks are probably good from about 40. And typically what you see is a lot of line drives, a lot of pulling it to the left. And that's what happened there. Upper Dublin takes over. Tip pass on Slivka's attempt there. Nearly picked off, but it falls to the ground. Second down and 10 now for Upper Dublin. But we've seen them, Mike, a bunch of times in the second half go to that five receiver set. Yeah, and they're, they're trying to spread out the Quakertown defense, and we saw that they've gone to five wide and then used Rosselli as a ball carrier up the middle, so can't argue with the success. It'll be second down and 10, and now an official timeout. 19 seconds remaining in the quarter. Upper Dublin trailing 13-7. to seven. Not sure what this discussion is about, whether it's a problem with the chains or the uh, the down box on the far sideline there. Looks to be the issue. Got an, got an official there working with someone on the sideline trying to fix the bottom half of that chain marker. Well, that'll be a good time to remind everyone that tonight's grub of the game sponsor is Flip City Shakes. They provided us with delicious burgers, fries, and chicken tenders tonight. And there's a lot more where that came from, with a huge menu and a large variety of milkshakes. For all of you Quakertown fans, make sure you check out the two Flip City Shakes locations at the Quakerstown Farmer's Market, one in Antiques Barn Number 2 and their new location in the main building. You can also visit their Southampton location at 233 2nd Street Pike. That's Flip City Shakes, tonight's Grub Game Sponsor. They do have some good grub game. Oh, I love it. I love it whenever we get a chance to have them bring in some food. The fries are always delicious. The burgers, top notch. And meanwhile, still trying to resolve that issue with the yard marker, Mike. So while we, while we have a chance to talk, Upper Dublin has completely flipped the script here in the second half. It was all Quakertown in the first and second quarter. Upper Dublin couldn't get their offense moving, but that drive, that 14 play, Six-minute drive to start the second half has changed the tone of the game. Oh, it certainly did, and, you know, it's it, it was not only the drive, because you're, you're absolutely right. The drive definitely changed the tone, but it was, you know, that drive with points on the board, and then Quakertown seemingly loses Michael Tara, lose Matt, loses Matt Pavone, and, and you could feel the momentum of this game starting to shift. Quakertown misses the field goal, Upper Dublin now takes over with a chance to take the lead. So still an issue with the yard marker on the sideline. Both teams are going to go to their respective sidelines. So we're going to take a quick break here. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful. So we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Each one of our centers is equipped with an Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill or warm water therapy pool to unload your aching joints. From pre and post surgery rehab, fitness programs, and work injury rehab, PTW is your go-to therapy provider. Call or visit us online to schedule your PTW visit today.
Welcome back to Cardinal Stadium in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Chain issue has been resolved, so it'll be second and 10 for the Cardinals with 19 seconds remaining in the quarter. Never a dull moment, partner. No, sir. You said it well. Schlicka going to take the chance downfield but gets sacked. That's number 40, Jeremy McGuigan in on the sack. A huge loss for the Cardinals. And it looks like that's going to be our last play of the quarter, but some indecision here on the part of Slifka really, really cost him. You see, he takes the snap and drops back right there. If he delivers it, he's got Selvin Haynes downfield, possibly for a first down. He pulls it down, takes the sack, and going to take Quakertown into the third quarter with a lead. Slivka dropped for the sack. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, fourth quarter action with Quakertown ahead 13 to 7. Hi, my name is Christian Barrett, and I'm a physical therapist as well as a clinical supervisor here at PTW Lansdale. And I'm coming to talk to you about concussions, uh, how they relate to sports, their treatment, and uh, overall management. Um, now, concussions have gained popularity in recent years, uh, particularly due to the interest of the NFL in terms of research and uh, treatment of them. Now, it's important to note that uh, concussions do not just occur in the NFL. They occur across all levels of competition. In particular, there were 3.8 million concussions uh, in sports last year. Now, we're talking just about sports now, um, but the concussions can occur throughout a variety of situations, whether it's a motor vehicle accident, uh, an injury in work, a slip or fall. Um, and you know, here at PTW Lansdale, we can um, treat no matter what the mechanism of injury was. Now, it's important to note that of understanding what concussions are, how they occur, what the symptoms are, and how we treat them. So it's important to have trained uh, health professionals. Um, and as physical therapists, we can uh, participate kind of in that uh, treatment and management of concussions. So to recognize um, some of the symptoms, some things you might see are mental fogginess, dizziness, nausea, Third down and 16. Schliffka gonna fire deep down the field and it is caught. Sliding grab from Lucas Rosselli. So on third down and 16, backed up towards their own end zone, the Cardinals are able to convert. Heck of a throw here by Mike Schliffka. He drops back, sees Rosselli break open up the middle of the field and just lobs it out there. A great sliding catch by Rosselli. And a Cardinal first down. Schliffka. Looked to pass, tried to run up the middle, but met at the line of scrimmage. A hard hit there by number 67, Max Russell. Yeah, Austin Hurd had him around the ankles, and Max Russell finished him off. Slifka was lucky to get some positive yard on the positive yardage on the play, gain of about a yard. We're here in the fourth quarter. Chris Markowitz alongside Mike Mataraki. It's been an interesting game. Upper Dublin trying to fight their way back into it in the second half. Schlivka's pass is complete, has his man Haynes, who picks up six yards. That will set up third down and four. And I said it before, I'll say it again. Selvin Haynes with the ball in space is never a bad thing for the Upper Dublin Cardinals. So Upper Dublin now will have it third down and four, just under 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Mike, that Third down and 17 conversion for them was a huge play. Absolutely, no question about it. Kept the drive rolling, allows them to get into this fourth quarter with some momentum, and a touchdown obviously ties this game. Now a handoff on third down. Powering forward is Novak, who has it for much more. Still going, finally taken down at the 38-yard line of Quakertown. And Chris on a third and four call. He was gonna get five. He was gonna have the first down. And not only did he get five, he got seven, he got nine, he got 11, he got 13. Nope. Unbelievable power run here by Novak. Up the middle goes Mason Novak. A big first down, the Cardinals driving here. They have all the momentum in their favor in the half. Three receivers to Schlifka's left. He fires, has Rosselli. He's tackled, but was unable to hang on to the pass. A nice hit there by the cornerback, Josh McGovern. 
That'll bring up second down and 10. And I think that's one of the few times that you will hear or you'll experience Lucas Roselli hearing footsteps. Knew that he was let, left himself wide open for the McGovern hit and just kind of left the ball on the field. Yeah, it's like you mentioned, Mike, he usually a sure-handed receiver, especially on those screen plays. But that'll bring up second down and 10 following the drop. Nine minutes, 40 seconds to go in the game. Schlifka going to hand it off to Novak. That's Novak on the carry. Short game, but a flag flies. And we are going to have a personal foul on Quakertown. Number 74, Ashton Hurd, looked like he took a shot at Slifka long after Slifka had handed the ball off. And there it is. It's rough. I don't know if it could be roughing the passer if he didn't throw the ball, but it will definitely be a personal foul and a unnecessary roughness. Unnecessary roughness on the quarterback. So that's the second penalty of such kind in the half on Quakertown. Both of them proving to be costly here down the stretch. I mean, and has this been a tale of two halves or what? I mean, we talked about it at halftime that the entire first half was all Quakertown, and now the entire second half has been all Upper Dublin. Cardinals will have it on the Quakertown 22. First down and 10, handoff to Novak. Novak met in the backfield by a couple tacklers for Quakertown. Maybe got a yard. That'll set up second down and long. Yeah, Upper Dublin approaching the Quakertown 20-yard line would have to assume that they're getting very close to field goal range, but obviously they want the six points. They want to tie that game with the opportunity to kick the extra point and go ahead. Offenses look good in the second half for the Cardinals. It'll be second down and 10 now on the 22. Tight end goes in motion. And it's going to be a fake handoff. Schlifka going to go up the middle, powering forward. Short of the first down marker, but he gets about eight, which will set up third down and short. An interesting play there, Chris. It looked like they were trying to do multiple fakes in the backfield while allowing the receiver to kind of break out and get open up the field. And it looked like the receiver either fell down or got held up in traffic. And Slifka decided at that point just to tuck and run and did a real, real nice job picking up seven, turning a third and ten into a third and three. Some misdirection in the backfield set up the lane for Schlifka. He took advantage. Now another power formation for the Cardinals. Handoff to Novak. Novak powering forward. This is going to be close, but it looks like he got the first down. Yeah, needed the, needed the 13. Got the 11. It is a first down for Upper Dublin. Clock continues to roll. Eight minutes, 11 seconds to go in the game. Cardinals moving the ball well here. Remember, they were backed up all the way near their own end zone, converted on a big third and 16. They're going to hand it off here. That is Rosselli in the backfield, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. That'll be second down and nine now. And I think the important thing here, Chris, is that it does appear, at least to the naked eye, that Upper Dublin can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Looks like if they get right around the one-yard line, they can get a new set of downs. And I think they'll be content just trying to power this thing right into the end zone. They've got Novak in the backfield. Two receivers to the left and right. Now a receiver goes in motion, but we'll have a flag on the play. Oh, I think we got a timeout for Coach Stover before the flag. It would have been a delay a game on the Cardinals, but we'll see if they got the timeout in time. Yeah, I saw Coach Stover go sprinting down the sideline calling for the timeout and the uh, the official on this side of the field started to blow his whistle and wave his arms to give him the timeout before the flag was thrown from the far side. So they get the, the timeout Do the Cardinals. We're going to keep things here. So it's the first timeout of the half for the Cardinals. And 
we'd like to take this time to once again remind you tonight's grub of the game sponsor is Flip City Shakes. They provided us with delicious burgers, fries, and chicken tenders, and there's more where that came from with a huge menu and a large variety of milkshake choices. For all your Quakertown fans, make sure you check out the two Flip City Shake locations at the Quakertown Farmer's Market in Antiquist Barnes number two and their new location in the main building. You can also visit their Southampton location at 233 2nd Street Pike. And also don't forget that back in the first half we had our All-American Sporting Goods hard hit of the game. For all of your sporting good needs, give them a call at 215-342-6141. So now out of the timeout, it will be second down and nine for the Cardinals. In motion goes the receiver, Jason Scott. And now Schlifka going to fire. He has his man. And into the end zone goes Roselli. The Cardinals have tied it at 13. And they'll have a chance to take the lead on the point after try. And that is a very, very well-designed play. You see, take another look at it now. The quick swing pass out to Roselli. But the block right there on the outside springs him. And that could be our stole agency play of the game. Well, we've got some time to go, and the PAT now going up. It is good, so the Cardinals take the lead, and I think we got to give it to them. That is going to be tonight's stole agency play of the game. Stole Bonds and Insurance specializes in the construction business industry. For all your bonding and construction insurance needs, please go to www.stoleagency.com. A huge touchdown for the Upper Dublin Cardinals. And Mike, with seven minutes and 10 seconds to go, a one point lead. What does Quakertown have to do now? As it was all them in the first half, but they've done nothing come second half here. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I, if we can, I'd love to get another look at that, that touchdown as our stole agency play of the game. But what we have to do here, we'll take another look at it. Here we go, the, the quick toss out to Roselli, and watch the block, boom, right there. We could have rolled that up and had that have been our stole agency play of the game and the All-American Sporting Goods hard hit of the game all at the same time, but what does Upper Dublin have to do now is they need to continue the momentum. I mean, they've basically stolen this game from Quakertown. Quakertown went into the half at 13 to nothing, and all of, they had all of the momentum, and now here we go. 7-10 left in the ball game, and Upper Dublin has stormed back to take a 14-13 lead. Uh, we do have an injured player on the field for Quakertown. Hard to make out the number right now. Injured player down for Quakertown. We're going to keep it here for now. That drive for Upper Dublin, 13 plays, just over five minutes of possession time. You said 13 plays. 13 plays. So Their entire play total for the first half was 14. Unbelievable. So in the second half, a 14 play drive to start it, then a 13 play drive to get their second score. That's been the difference in the game, Mike. Their ability to stay on the field. And we go back to it was third down and 16. They were stuck within their own 10 yard line. They were going to have to punt from a a tough position on the field, but they converted on a deep pass, and that changed the game. Yeah, and huge, huge play with Roselli. That deep pass up the middle, the nice sliding catch to keep the drive alive, and here we go. For those of you just joining us, it's a 14-13 lead for Upper Dublin with seven minutes and 11 seconds to go in the game. Quakertown had a 13-0 lead in the first half, but Upper Dublin with two long touchdown drives, they now lead by one, and Quakertown needs to respond here. And Chris, a, a, an amazing development here is, you know, in, in high school, many of the players play both offense and defense, and so far tonight, we've seen Quakertown lose one of their leading rushers, Michael Terra, one of their leading receivers and a defensive force, Matt Pavone, and that injured player was none other than quarterback Brad Bryan. So things go from bad to worse for the Panthers. It'll be interesting to see if Bryan can come back and finish this game off, and if not, 
Will the Panthers turn to Tyler Wer uh, Merworth? Well, they have Merworth on the roster. They also have Jimmy Casey, a six foot five sophomore listed at a quarterback slash tight end. So you might see him as well. But if Brian cannot go, that is a huge loss for Quakertown. Meanwhile, the kickoff from Upper Dublin is a good one. Fielding it is number 16, Garlic, and he does not get much there on the return, tackled at the 15-yard line. Uh, Tim Garlic backpedaled all the way into his own end zone and surprised that he even brought it out. So a good kick there for Upper Dublin. Quakertown will have it on their own 15. Alongside Mike Mataraki, I'm Christopher Markowitz. It's a 14-13 game. A big comeback in the second half for Upper Dublin. And it's Warmarth in at the quarterback position now. He's going to take it and run himself up the middle for a gain of five. So they go with Tyler Murworth at the quarterback spot, a six-foot sophomore. Usually see him at the receiver spot, and they play him in that wildcat formation. So it'll be interesting to see now if Quakertown goes strictly to a ground attack or if Merworth has the same type of passing skills as Brian. Obviously, Brad Brian, a very talented, talented senior quarterback. See what we get out of the sophomore Tyler Merworth. Well, right as you mentioned it, Brian back in the game and his first pass is complete towards the far sideline. Looks like it was complete to Garlic, who was tackled just shy of the first down. So right while as we got to our imagination, thinking what Merworth's going to do, Brian comes back onto the field. And that's certainly good news for the Panthers. Obviously, you never want to see anyone leave the game injured. And when he was carried off the field, it didn't look good. So with Brian back in the game, he has a completion, and it'll be third down and two now for the Panthers. Brian with a receiver wide out to his right. It's a misdirection play. Pass down the field is complete to Garlic. A huge gain as he's tackled just shy of the 35-yard line. So they ran the reverse to Tyler Merworth, and Merworth stopped and popped, if you will, throws the wide receiver slash halfback option as we take another look at it here. Had Garlic streaking down the right side. There's Merwarth, stops, fires it down the field, hits Garlic in stride. Impressive pass. And Quakertown now inside of the upper Dublin 40-yard line. Quakertown driving with five minutes and 20 seconds to go in the game. They trail by one. All they need is a field goal. They have three receivers split to the left, two to the right. Now in motion. Fake handoff goes Brian up the middle. That's Met at the line of scrimmage, no gain on the keeper. Yeah, Matthew Shields wasn't having any of that. Gain of one on the play. He picked that out right away and threw Brian to the turf. So they split three receivers to the left at Quakertown. They sent Delbert Ross in motion in the backfield. They faked the handoff. But as you mentioned, Mike, Upper Dublin not fooled on that play. No, and if there's any question about whether, whether or not Brian is healthy. He certainly, will, certainly looked it on that play. I don't think he liked the hit at the end, but certainly healthy enough to carry the ball. It'll be second down and nine now. Brian takes the snap, looking to his left. He fires, it's a low pass, incomplete, intended for Garlic. Four minutes, 27 seconds to go. It's third down and nine. And I was going to say, Chris, this brings up a huge third down. And if you're the offensive coordinator for this Panther offense, Mike, what are you calling here in this situation? Well, two quarters ago, I probably would have been calling Michael Terra. I, I think now what we're probably going to see is Brian looking for either Garlic or Patrick out of the backfield with a pass. Quakertown needs timeout. They had Wormerth lined up at the quarterback position, but they did not like the look. 
And they were running out of time, so they're going to have to burn one. We're going to keep it here as it's 4 minutes, 27 seconds to go in the game. This is a huge spot, obviously, for both teams. Quakertown needs just a field goal to take a late lead and go back on top of Upper Dublin, who's made a, an impressive second-half comeback. Oh, no question about it. I mean, we've, we've talked about it now several times through the late third and early fourth quarters that this game was Quakertown's game at halftime. And, and Upper Dublin has basically come out in the second half and said, oh, no, not in our house. No, you don't. And, and have essentially just snatched the entire game right back from the Panthers. It's been an impressive second half from Upper Dublin's offense, Mike. A 14-play drive to start it, and then a 13-play drive that went into the fourth quarter. It gave them this 14-13 lead. But Quakertown on a drive of their own right now trying to respond and reclaim the lead. And we mentioned it a couple of times earlier, but Upper Dublin only ran 14 plays in the entire first half. They have two drives in the second half that are that long. They have Warmorth in at quarterback through the Panthers. They're going to run him to the right. He is met in the backfield, stays on his feet somehow. No gain, but a huge stop there by the Upper Dublin defense. Great penetration by number 13, Jason Scott, to get into the backfield and disrupt the play. Force the quarterback to have to cut it back to the inside, and he was met basically by the rest of the Upper Dublin defense, and... Now we have some, uh, some crunch time action. 3.54 to go and a fourth and 10. If you're Quakertown, do you punt and try to play defense or do you keep the offense on the field? They're going for it. Here we go. Brian back in at quarterback. And a whistle here. Timeout going to be taken by Upper Dublin. So Brett Stover did not like what he saw with his defense out on the field. Going to call the timeout, get a second look here. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere when we come back. The end of this one. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful, so we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Each one of our centers is equipped with an Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill or warm water therapy pool to unload your aching joints. From pre and post surgery rehab, fitness programs, and work injury rehab, PTW is your go-to therapy provider. Call or visit us online to schedule your PTW visit today. Welcome back to Cardinal Stadium. Christopher Markowitz alongside Mike Mataraki. It's been an exciting one here tonight on SFBN. A one-point game with three minutes and 41 seconds to go. And Mike, fourth and nine. This could be it for Quakertown. Crucial play for both teams right here. Let's give it a look. Brian takes the snap. Has time. He's going to roll to his left. Brian with a juke move. Now running to his right. Firing deep down the right sideline. It is caught. It is caught, a great snag there by Tyler Merworth. Brad Bryan looking like Johnny Manziel in the backfield, somehow able to avoid some tacklers and complete this one for a huge first down. Now this is an absolute unbelievable play. He drops back, he rolls left, he stops, turns all the way around, avoids a pass rusher, comes back to the right, launches a desperation heave, and there's number four, Tyler Merwart, on the receiving end. And now all of a sudden, it's Quakertown ball at the upper Dublin 10-yard line. A little more than three minutes to go. It's going to be a handoff. Ross, met in the backfield, fumble. Fumble on the ground, and upper Dublin has it. Huge defensive play, Chris. Huge play. And the crowd erupts here at Cardinal Stadium. Just when you thought Quakertown was going to score, a turnover on the fumble. Here it is. Looked like number 23. Logan Helm got in there, made the tackle and the strip. Ball on the ground. An interior lineman for Upper Dublin falls on it. And just like that, the Cardinals take a deep breath, can take it and run it out the rest of the way. Three minutes to go, Cardinal ball. They've got one in the bank, 
Three minutes and six seconds remain here in the fourth. Quakertown does have two timeouts, but if you get a first down, that's basically it. Handoff, Rosselli picks up a couple there. And Chris, I don't know if you caught it there right before the snap. Quakertown basically rushed their entire defensive backfield up to the line of scrimmage. I mean, at this point, they're selling out. It's going to be a stop in the backfield or for no gain, or Upper Dublin's going to break something big. Timeout taken by Quakertown, their second of the half, and obviously you got to burn them to keep the clock from running. Two minutes, 58 seconds to go. It'll be second down and seven. A first down will more than likely end the game. No two minute warning in high school. So if you're Quakertown, you need to get a quick stop and get the punt. Hopefully have some time to run some plays towards the end of this one. But if you're Upper Dublin, all you really need to do here, Mike, is pick up that first down. Yeah, and now they're, you know, they're, they're in a, a definitely a manageable down and distance. It's second and seven. Obviously with the ball still, you know, inside of their 15 yard line. They want to be careful, two hands on the ball, but you see they're coming out, Slifka under center in a power formation, and here we go. Handoff, Rosselli, close sideline, tripped up near the first down marker, and he's gonna pick it up. That'll move the chains and keep the clock running. A huge first down for Rosselli. Under 2.50 to go now. Quakertown does not use their timeout. And if you notice the one very smart thing that Lucas Rosselli did there was he got towards the sideline, but as you watch here, rather than cutting too close to the sideline, he keeps it a good 5 to 10 feet inbound so that he couldn't get pushed out of bounds and allow the clock to stop. Handoff again. Rosselli going to pick up... Another good chunk of yards. Gain of five on the play. Clock continues to run. Uh, it looks like Quakertown has called their timeout. So for Quakertown now, no timeouts left. Even if you're able to force a stop here with two minutes and 17 seconds to go, the Cardinals are going to take about 80 seconds off the clock, Mike. So... Realistically, what you're looking at is no timeouts and about 40 seconds to go if you're Quaker Town. That's your ideal situation. That's the best you could do. Yeah, and while we've said, you know, we've said earlier in the game that, you know, Quaker Town isn't necessarily a, a quick strike offense, they do have the ability to strike quick. We, we have seen a, a couple of, uh, we'll call them, Toys from the bag of tricks come out tonight. A couple of reverses, a couple of halfback passes, a wide receiver pass off of a reverse. So they do have the ability to hit a big play, but it's going to have to be a trick play because their offense tends to be more of a ground and pound. Meanwhile, Upper Dublin has an opportunity to just end the game. All they need is a first down, and the clock is on their side. And off again to Rosselli. He goes up the middle, powering forward, and he's going to get the first down. And barring a fumble, that is going to do it. Now they will reset the ball and start the clock, and we're now running at 2.10 with a fresh set of downs. 2.10 to go, and from this point on, Upper Dublin going to just keep it on the ground. What a game for Rosselli here tonight, Mike. You know, it's interesting that when they've needed the, the power yards or when they needed the power yards early in the second half. Roselli on the carry. As they, Roselli takes it here, they short went, game. Right, they went to Mason Novak, but once it got down to the nitty-gritty, they went to Roselli, and Roselli has not disappointed. Certainly has not. And throughout the game, even on the first play, he took a pass that was a check down route in the backfield for a 55-yard gain. He's caught some passes out of the backfield, and he's been explosive on carries to the left or to the right of the line of, of the uh, offensive line, excuse me. And he's had some big carries on this final drive to run the clock out. Oh, he is a phenomenal athlete. 5'8", 155 pound senior, running back, defensive back. Perhaps not the size and speed that a 
Division I school may be looking for, but certainly there is going to be some opportunity for him at the next level. He's got all the intangibles, the speed, the quickness, the elusivity. Great, great outing tonight by Rosselli. Third down and five now, clock still running. And this is likely gonna be it. All Upper Dublin has to do now is take a knee and they have, they will come away with a home victory. A huge comeback as their offense was beyond, beyond abysmal in the first half. But a great drive to open up the second half. Great defensive stops, and then a touchdown by Rosselli capped it off. They got the fumble towards the end when it looked like Quakertown was going to strike and take the lead again. Just a great performance in the second half by Upper Dublin. It really is unbelievable, Chris, and I feel like we're beating a dead horse here, but I, I think it bears repeating that this truly has been a tale of two halves. I mean, Quakertown, quite frankly, could do nothing wrong in the first half. And in the second half, it was just the opposite. Upper Dublin just seized control of this game basically from the outset, and they've not taken their foot off the gas. Crowd going wild here at Cardinal Stadium. 20 seconds remaining. It's third down and five. All that Upper Dublin has to do now is take a knee, and that is going to do it. Slivka goes to the ground, and the clock will run out. Final score in this one is going to be 14 13. It's a comeback victory for the Upper Dublin Cardinals. They overcome a 13 0 halftime deficit. Mike, your final thoughts on tonight's game? Well, it, it was a tough road for Mike Slivka and the Upper Dublin offense. I mean, he he was all over the place in the first half. Let's let's not make any bones about it. He was all over the place in the first half, and it was almost as as if you know, Coach Stover had said, as our quarterback goes, so goes the offense. You know, they hit that big play early, but then turned it over and then got nothing else going in the first half at all. Second half, we talked about it. What were they going to do? Were they going to come out and try to establish the ground game? Or were, gonna, were they going to let Slifka get right back on the horse? And they did. They let Slifka get back on the horse. A couple of safe throws to start the second half got him back in rhythm. They were able to go with a good mix of run and pass, seized control of the game, and they come away with the one-point victory. Slivka looked good in the second half. Rosselli good throughout. Final score once again, 14-13. Upper Dublin defeats Quakertown. For my partner, Mike Mataraki, and for our crew here, Julian Bellman, uh, Michael Satelli, Carl Mays, and Stephen Cyan, I'm Christopher Markowitz. Thank you so much for joining us here at SFBN. We'll catch you next time.